left off, we had just finished sticking it with a couple coats of the pomegranate juice. And now this one will be covering the alcohol inks that I also placed on it to enhance the color as well as So we're going to get started with the alcohol inks. I'm starting out with the hot pink here and putting it on a in a sunburst fashion. Uh, a burst fashion is pretty traditional when it comes to the LP guitars. And I wanted to utilize these alcohol inks to help emphasize the color of the pomegranate juice. However, I know that the pomegranate juice is going to oxidize and turn uh, orangey-brown eventually, so I want there to be an actual vivid color over it. So we started out, as I said, with a hot pink, and um, then we're going to a cherry red. Once again, sticking to the perimeter uh, in that burst fashion. And then we'll be moving on to a crimson, a violet, and then last but not least, a black, which is actually a very, 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 very dark indigo purple. Um, these are all handmade alcohol inks that I made out of Sharpie and 91% uh, rubbing alcohol. Now eventually I probably will post a how-to tutorial to make these yourself. It's not that difficult and I find that they work just as well as any solvent-based dye uh, that you can purchase as well as um, even better than the Tim Holtz uh, scrapbooking dyes or anything that you can buy at an arts and crafts store. You get two to three times the amount for probably, depending on how cheap you can buy the Sharpies, you can get away with three times as much for maybe a quarter of the price. Um, especially if you're frugal and you shop at the dollar stores. Um, but that's for another day. So I also found that with the alcohol inks, the best way to um, apply the ink is to use um, makeup sponges. The, the sponges that are used uh, to apply foundation um, and to do blending of highlighting and contouring on the face, it works just as well with the uh, alcohol inks and also with the unicorn spit, um, which is a water-based gel, stain, pigment, either way, it works really, really well, especially with going in and blending. One of the things that I really, really enjoy about using the alcohol inks is that they're very vivid, but they also are reworkable if you know how to work with them. Um, you can't re-wet them with water, however, you can um, blend them with more alcohol ink. And as long as you are patient and you work from lighter to darker, um, and don't go uh, down or up more than one step at a time. It uh, definitely is a pretty forgiving media to work in. And so we're doing the face now. And what I really love about the alcohol inks as well is it gets in deeper than water-soluble pigments. So this is going to actually get into the grain deeper than the pomegranate juice. And it is really going to soak in and start emphasizing that grain. And you'll see exactly how it pops after we're done. And I'm doing just a little bit of more of a messy pour on the front 
just because I really want that, that pigment to soak in and really go deep on the front. And you know, just make sure that you catch any drips on the sides um, when you are working with that. It's not so bad because the alcohol in other alcohol inks will reactivate the pigment and let you push it around a little bit, especially with those sponge applicators. They're just amazing for working in this medium. The biggest thing is, is just to work in really light layers and build up that color. Uh, just like with any other stain, you have to go little by little. So you'll see me doing several passes over and over and over again. And after it is dried, I will be going over it again after I do a bit of a sanding. So now I'm going in with that black, black Sharpie, which is that very, very indigo, violety color. It doesn't look so dark um, because it goes on very, very softly which I really appreciated because I was a little trepidatious to begin with with that but it is working out very very nicely if that um, built up shadowy burst figure on the guitar. Also on the second pass which unfortunately did not um, record. I did emphasize a little bit more of a cherry red and a bit of a flamey orange in the center to really make the, the center pop. And you know, take your time. Definitely uh, you can load up the color over and over again and again um, and if it gets to be too much you can always go back in and sand out but the biggest thing is that you want to make sure that the application is very even and that you don't want splotchiness and once I was finished with this first pass it was splotchy in some areas so I did sand it down and go in with alcohol inks once again and um, even out that tone. I'm now putting that black Sharpie alcohol ink uh, around the sides to give it a little bit uh, more depth to the color. And now we're going to go and do that second pass um, with the alcohol inks. Unfortunately, I was not able to record everything prior to my camera stop working. So, but just little by little and add and subtract, add and subtract, rub it in um, and blend it into the woods. You don't have that harsh line. Anytime you see a harsh line, just uh, you reapply with some more ink and you know use a very small circular motion to really blend it in just like you're blending um, makeup in on a face if you aren't familiar with how to do that definitely just you know take five ten minutes to um, really really practice it on a piece of scrap wood and you'll be ridiculously surprised at how easy it is to do it. Um, and it really does give a, a really great uh, burst without having to invest in a lot of equipment and airbrushing. So now I'm
I'm just sanding it back a little bit. And it's giving that a little bit more blending um, and allowing some of that pomegranate color to come out. At this point, I um, am adding a little bit of water to the sanding because wet dry sanding always seems to work a little bit better with those sanding blocks. And uh, it gives a little bit nicer blend uh, without the harsh lines. So once again, it's just all about addition and subtraction. I decided at that point that I was not going to be applying the unicorn spit onto this guitar body because I was happy with the natural coloring as well as the alcohol inks and uh, I didn't want to really gild the lily. So, uh, and at this point I'm just using uh, the rag to, to wipe down as well as um, the sanding block to really kind of raise some of that figuring of the grain and we are also um, going in and attacking any kind of glue marks that I'm seeing that are popping out um, as well because that is what we do Now we're using some of the Birchwood Cassidy grain filler and this is really easy to apply and it does a fantastic job at filling the grain very easily. It's by the makers of the True Oil um, finish that's usually made with the, for gun, gun stocks and other woodworking projects. I really like this because it's super easy to apply with a uh, non lint rag and uh, you just put on a goodly amount and by the time I was finished applying uh, to the back and the sides, the front was almost dry. I did three coats of the filler, sanding in between each coat lightly with a 500 grit sandpaper and you can see that the alcohol inks have really uh, started to uh, transform that guitar and the grain. The biggest thing to remember about this, just like with True Oil, is you don't want drips because drips are bad. So just continue to put a little bit on the guitar and work it in in a, a swiping motion, polishing motion. And it's pretty, pretty simple to use and it's one of my favorite products. Look at the flame on that. This is gorgeous. And this has just been grain filled. This was after the second coat of alcohol inks yesterday. It's amazing. Well, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please subscribe and hit like and the notification bell down on the bar so that way you get notified next time I upload a video. I look forward to uh, continuing on making this guitar with you guys and I can't wait to do the next step which is going to be the guitar neck staining and also doing something a little bit different with the headstock. So until next time, have a wonderful day and we'll see you. Bye!